Hey guys, Spud Knocker here, as always, and welcome back to the office of our F A 18 C Hornet over the vast stretches of the Western Pacific Ocean. Now, today I figured we'd delve into a topic that I get asked about all the time by new DCS World players that basically boils down to how do I acquire targets with my targeting pod in order to prosecute them with my JDAMs, LGBs, AGM-65s, and whatever nastiness you have hung under your wings to drop onto the enemy. Now, there isn't a clear-cut, perfect answer to this question, but I have six different methods written down on my kneeboard here that we're going to go over from step one to the point where you're ready to actually prosecute those targets. But before we get started, let's go ahead and open up our controls menu to take a look at the HOTAS commands we're going to need. In order to make the targeting pod work correctly and acquire targets in an expeditious manner, you're going to need to know your HOTAS commands down pat in the FA-18C. So let's go ahead and open up our controls menu. And the first one we'll take a look at is the probably most important thing we need. And that is the sensor control switch. So that way we can tell the jet where we want our throttle designator controller to be slaved to. Our HUD, our DDIs, our MPCD, whatever it is. We need to make sure we have depress, forward, aft, left, and right mapped. I'm currently using a Thrustmaster FA-18C stick grip, and so that makes it very, very easy to have all of these controls mapped in a very good manner for the FA-18. Another thing we need to have mapped, of course, is the throttle designator controller. I currently have the throttle designator controller depress mapped, and you'll notice that down, left, right, and up are not mapped here. I actually have a thumbstick that I have on the front of my VPC CM3 throttle that makes it very, very easy to have an awesome axis to slew around the captain's bars on my radar or to slew my targeting pod or even the SPI on my HUD or HMD very, very easily and efficiently. However, we can talk about some pitfalls that having this map to an axis may incur on new DCS world players who maybe don't have their axes set up entirely correctly. So you'll definitely want to have your throttle designator controller mapped via an axis or through a hat switch via down, left, right, and up. Another button we're definitely going to be using a ton today in this tutorial is the undesignate slash nose wheel steering switch. We're going to be using this to undesignate certain speeds and undesignate radar uh, targets on the ground so that way we can go through these six different methods very quickly and expeditiously for you guys as well as if you set up a SPI in a specific spot that you don't want it to be, you can just delete it very easily by undesignating it. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and hop back to the cockpit of our F-18. And we'll talk about have, how we have the actual cockpit set up. Now, because we're gonna be doing a lot of heads down work with the targeting pod and radar today, we want to make sure our pilot workload is as low as possible. And as a result, we have our barometric altitude hold turned on at 15,000 feet, as well as coupled to waypoint one. We also have our auto throttles turned on at 300 knots indicated for us. So we also have our air to ground radar on our right DDI, our HSI between our knees on our MPCD, as well as our FLIR targeting pod footage on our left DDI here. So the first method we're going to talk about is how to actually acquire a target for your targeting pod through the air to ground radar on your FA-18. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to zoom out our targeting pod, or if we're going to increase our radar range, that is, out to 80 nautical miles. And we can see this little tiny little blip on our air to ground radar is actually the island of Farallon de Mendania the air to ground weapons range that is on the Marianas map by default. There's some pretty cool little shipping container targets that are set there by default on this map that are very great for practicing your air to ground skills. So we're first we're going to go sensor control switch right, which is going to slave our TDC or throttle designator controller to our right hand DDI. Please note that this does not slave your throttle designator controller to a specific sensor. Rather, it slaves it to a specific display. In this case, our right DDI, or in other cases, could be your HUD slash HMD, your left DDI, or even your MPCD. 
So the first way we're going to acquire a target for our targeting pod via the air-to-ground radar is actually going to be through the C function. We can see we currently have a small ship steaming to the south on the eastern side of Farallon de Mendenilla. Please do note that the procedure for tracking a target is exactly the same between C mode and ground moving target mode. So whether you're going after a moving tank or truck or a moving ship, it's exactly the same procedurally. So first let's go ahead and talk about some intricacies of how to use the air to ground radar in C mode or GMT mode in conjunction with a targeting pod. So let's go ahead and pause it real quick here. We can either set a speed or center, sensor point of interest, which will lock the targeting pod to a specific point on the ground, or we can actually lock the ship up via a radar lock through our air-to-ground radar. Locking the ship through our air-to-ground radar will automatically slave our targeting pod to that moving target and allow you to engage the ship with, say, a nice forward firing weapon like a AGM-65E laser guided Maverick, for instance. So let's go ahead and try it now. We can either set a SPI at the location of that moving target by going sensor control switch to press, which is then denoted by that cross, which then shows up on the air to ground radar display. And we can see that the targeting pod is now slaved down to a target on the ocean down there. We'll go ahead and pause it one more time here. Something to note about the way that the uh, targeting pod is actually set up in DCS World as of July 2021 is the actual scene will not render for the targeting pod in DCS World on any aircraft, not just the FA-18C, if the target is further away than 42 nautical miles which we can see here on the targeting pod and of course mirrored up here on the HUD. If the target is within 42 nautical miles for whatever reason, the scene will actually render and you'll be able to see that target. So let's go ahead and unpause. And we will get rid of that SPI. When you undesignate or get rid of a SPI, your targeting pod goes automatically into snowplow mode, which means that the pod is now looking 45 degrees down below the waterline of your jet, and so you could actually fly that onto a point or a target if you wanted to, but I find that to be very, very difficult. Now let's go ahead and try actually locking up this ship with our air-to-ground radar. We want to go sensor control switch right in order to lock up that ship. Now keep in mind that we go sensor control switch right because it is on our right-hand DDI. If your air-to-ground radar was, say, on your MPCD or even your left DDI, you would have to mirror the direction of that display with your sensor control switch. For instance, to lock up the ship on our left DDI, we'd want to go sensor control switch left. As we close the range, we'll start to be able to see the render of that ship on our targeting pod here. And for whatever reason, in DCS world, I believe it's a bug because this doesn't seem to make any sense that this would happen in the real aircraft. If we slave our TDC to our targeting pod and then zoom in the targeting pod onto our ship here, it seems to unlock the ship via our air to ground radar. I don't think that in the real jet this would have any effect on the actual uh, air-to-ground radar itself. I believe this is a DCS world bug, but I'm sure someone can correct me in the comments. At this point, we'd have to manually track the ship via our TDC slave to our targeting pod. However, if we wanted to, say, get that lock back up, all we'd have to do is hit the undesignate button, delete that SPI, go sensor control switch right, get our TDC back over our ship, sensor control switch right again, and now our targeting pod is slave to the radar contact that's locked up in our air-to-ground radar. Like I said earlier, it's perfect for a forward firing weapon like an AGM-65E attack on this ship. It's not going to be all that great for, say, dropping a laser-guided bomb on the ship, because as we pass over the target, like say if we were delivering an LGB, the target is going to pass underneath the bottom uh, gimbal limit of our radar the lock is going to be lost and we would have to actually continue tracking the ship manually via our TDC. Also keep in mind that if you lose the lock, like say you purposefully hit 
sensor control switch right to delete the lock, it automatically creates a SPI in the last known location of that ship that we can see here and is now drifting away from it. And so that's very, very important if say you're tracking a moving tank or a truck or even a ship and that truck, tank or ship decides to halt, it will delete the radar lock that you have with the air to ground radar. But that last known location of that uh, ship will become a SPI and thus your pod will still be on top of it. And then at that point, we'd still have to go ahead, go and track it manually via our pod. So please keep in mind, that, like I said earlier, that this uh, procedure is exactly the same whether you are uh, using the GMT mode to track a moving truck or tank or whether you're in C mode to track a moving ship. So let's go over to map mode and talk about how to use the map mode in conjunction with your targeting pod to put a speed on a general geographic location that then you can then sweeten up the picture to actually find a pinpoint target like a truck or a tank. Please keep in mind that this is a very good way to say find a specific geographic location, but not necessarily a pinpoint target like that truck or tank that we mentioned earlier. So we'll go sensor control switch right again. We'll put our captain's bars over the top of our little contact here of Farallon de Mendenia, and we'll hit TDC to press to put a SPI directly over the top of our radar contact of Farallon de Mendenia. Also, the keen eye around you will know that the small contact here is actually the ship giving radar returns for the map mode, and the larger contact is the island itself. We can now see that we have a SPI that is on the very top and center of the island, which is absolutely perfect. But let's say that we wanted a more zoomed in view of our target down there. Well, what we can do is we can use the expand mode one and expand mode two to actually zoom the field of view of our air to ground radar into the island so that way we can get a more precise location for our speed on the island itself. So in order to do that, we're going to want to offset away from the island itself. And when we press expand mode one, it's going to take a little bit of a moment for the island to start populating. And we can see that that's not that big of a difference. It's not really zoomed in all that much. So we can hit expand mode two and we can see a much more expanded view of the island down there itself. Now, if we hit undesignate and try to put a SPI on the island at this point, you can see that the SPI did not populate right at the point that we had our captain's bars. This is because the closure rate between us and the island is very, very fast at 300 knots indicated. Thus, the actual geographical point that our captain's bars was over is changing all the time, and thus the aircraft is trying its best through the various algorithms of its mission computer to place that speed over that particular point it thinks that you want. Now, we can make this a little bit easier and that we can increase the update time and scan rate of our radar by boxing fast down here on the bottom left OSB. And that can allow us to set a speed a little bit more accurately in the middle of the island, which we can see is mirrored here on the field of view of our targeting pod. So then once we have that speed in the kind of geographical area we want it to be on the island itself, we can then go sensor control switch left, slave our throttle designator controller to our pod itself and then slew the pod to say track a specific target, like say this uh, little bunker complex made by these shipping containers or this little truck here or this little truck here and so on and so forth to actually get those pinpoint targets that you want to go after. Please keep in mind though that Farallon de Mendenia down here is a rather vertical island. We can see it has lots of steep cliffs all around it, and of course there's a little ship there. And so as a result, the mission computer of our FA-18 is really kind of going off of the basis of mean sea level. And so you have to be very careful when you're delivering weapons to an elevated target because of the fact that uh, sometimes the targeting pod likes to look through it and actually has a point pinpointed behind the island or behind the target. This is why it can be relatively difficult to attack 
let's say, a, the top of a large, tall building. So just keep that in mind, and that's why we can see the actual speed location here on our air-to-ground radar is actually behind the island. The targeting pod, based off of how its logic is trying to figure out where exactly you want the pod pointed, is actually back behind the island here, and you're looking through the cliff. So just a little quirk to keep in mind, and uh, that can definitely throw off your weapons deliveries if you're not careful with that. So now that we've gone ahead and covered how to acquire a target via your air-to-ground radar, let's go ahead and come out of expand mode. And let's talk about the method that 99% of DCS World F-18 pilots use 99% of the time. And that, of course, is the waypoint designate method. So we'll go ahead and select our target point, which we know is at waypoint three. And we can see that this control is mirrored on both our SA page, WPDSG, right here underneath our waypoint select buttons on our SA page, as also mirrored on our HSI page on our MPCD, waypoint designate and the waypoint select buttons. So we can press it here or on our SA page, it does not matter. And when we select that point, it turns that waypoint into a speed, which is then you know, you have the target directly right underneath the crosshair of your targeting pod very, very easily. If you've placed that waypoint, say, right on top of your primary target in the mission editor. Now, that is really, really great if you know the coordinates for your target and you can create a waypoint directly on top of your target or you're in the mission editor and creating the waypoint directly on top of it anyway. Again, like I've said, this is kind of the method that 99% of DCS World players use 99% of the time. So moving on from there, since that's a very pretty quick and easy method, let's go ahead and undesignate again. And let's talk about a few other methods that we have of designating targets for our targeting pod in the Hornet. Now let's say we don't have a waypoint and the air to ground radar is not gonna work for us. And say uh, we need to get our eyes and our targeting pod onto that target very, very quickly. Like maybe you're giving close air support in a very tightly compact uh, urban environment. Well, a lot of you guys will be very familiar with VVSLV or Velocity Vector Slave Mode, which is the mode that we've had to use in the F-A-18 for a very, very long time before the air-to-ground radar or waypoint designate or even the HMD controls were implemented in the F-A-18 by Eagle Dynamics. And so what this does is when you have VVSLV boxed in the center right-hand OSB button, it slaves the field of view of the targeting pod directly to your velocity vector on your HUD. I recommend that when you're in this mode, you have the pod zoomed out a bit, so that way you're not seeing a super tight field of view through the lens of your targeting pod when you're trying to designate a point on the ground through your HUD. So in order to set a speed when you're doing this, you need to make sure that your targeting pod or your sensor control switch has your TDC slave to your HUD. So you want to go sensor control switch forward and you know you have it done correctly when you see the little dot inside of your velocity vector. When we fly the velocity vector over the top of our target, we're going to hit TDC depress just like as we've been doing to create a speed the whole time with the other methods. And then the pod will be locked to that geographical point that was underneath our velocity vector. Now again, this is not a super duper precise method and you're not gonna be able to say acquire very pinpoint targets like a specific tank or a specific truck. It's more for acquiring a geographical area that then you can sweeten up the picture to find those pinpoint targets by setting your throttle designator controller slave to your targeting pod in order to then slew it around and find those pinpoint targets. So we'll go ahead and come around to our island. We're gonna pull back on the throttle and we'll roll in on the island here. 
we'll get our velocity vector onto the island and we can see that wherever that velocity vector is tracking is shown in the field of view on the pod itself. And we can go sensor uh, throttle designator controller depress and it will slave that point to the pod. At this point, we can go sensor control switch left and then start slewing the pod around to find those pinpoint targets. But let's say we want to slew the pod around with a very coarse setting. We can go sensor control switch up to slave the TDC to the HUD, and then we can make very big movements of the SPI with our TDC. You can see that Altitude. we can move Altitude. very big movements of the speed where our targeting pod is pointing with the HUD there. We can then go sensor control switch left and then make finer movements by slewing the pod itself. So let's go ahead and pull off. And you guys can see that that method can be of slewing the pod can get you lost very, very easily by slewing it on your HUD. Because it makes such coarse movements, you can get lost and the speed can leave the field of view of your HUD very, very easily. And so especially if you have a axis that is not configured properly with the proper curves and dead zone, you can actually find your uh, speed walking all over the place. It can be very, very easy to mitigate that by making sure that if you have an axis for your TDC, you have some dead zone in there to make sure that there's no unintended movement of that speed or the field of view of your pod when you're trying to find and pinpoint targets. Now, next method is the exact same method that we just did, but using our HMD to pinpoint a place for our speed for the targeting pod. So we'll go ahead and turn 90 degrees here, so that way our pod is not going to be masked. And we'll undesignate our current speed. And we will turn on our HMD. And we'll go sensor control switch forward. So that way we have our TDC slave to our HUD, or in this case, our HMD. You know that you have your sensor control switch up and forward, slaving your TDC to your HUD slash HMD when you have this gun sight looking reticle on the field of view of your HMD. If you hit sensor control switch left to slave it back to your pod, you see that reticle go away and lets you know that your TDC is slaved back to your pod or to another sensor such as your air to ground radar. And then if we go TDC, or sorry, sensor control switch forward again, we then have the reticle back on our HMD, letting us know that our TDC is now slaved to our HMD slash HUD. Then if we put our reticle over the top of a target area or any area we we'll want to take a look at with our targeting pod, we can then say TDC depress. That is now our speed and our targeting pod will be looking right at that point. If we don't like that point, we can just simply undesignate and redesignate at another point, like say the southern tip of this island. And we can see that the TDC is now looking at that point on the island. Undesignate again. We need to take a look at the north end of the island. Right there. And of course, you can even make very, very coarse adjustments to the location of your speed through your HMD. When there's a dot inside the diamond, you can then move your speed via your throttle designator controller in the field of view of your HMD. Now this works much, much better when you have the aircraft nice and stabilized 
So that way your HMD will show you the best possible picture as to where that speed actually is. Again, this can be very, very frustrating for say new DCS world pilots who might not have their axes for their TDC binded correctly or maybe don't have a dead zone on that TDC axis because that very coarse adjustment when having the speed adjusted through your HMD can make the speed go off of your field of view of your HMD very, very quickly and walk it very far away from your target. So you just have to be very, very careful with that. And the best way to avoid that is simply to undesignate your target and then redesignate it and go sensor control switch left, right, or down to get your, your TDC slave to a different display. Now it will not make those super coarse adjustments on your HMD. And you know your TDC is now slave to another sensor or another display because we do not have the dot inside of the diamond in the field of view of our HMD. So I hope this tutorial was helpful for you guys out there who are trying to learn how to actually designate a target with your targeting pod or more or less how to acquire a target area with your targeting pod using a few different methods. We basically went through these methods based off of how far away you are from the target. The further away you are from the target, the more time you have to set up a good air to ground radar picture of the target area or do a waypoint designate. And then if you're right on top of the target area, I recommend or trying to set up a speed via your HMD. So if you liked the video, please give us a like and a subscribe and uh, stay safe out there guys and uh, fly healthy. <laughs> we'll see you in the next one.